Nia Slot, a video that makes you see this world differently. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Nia Slot. In this video, I'm going to talk three stocks I am buying. As we know, right now, US stocks is very crazy. Every day, very fluctuating, especially due to the US president election. It's quite unpredictable. However, recently, the stock market is increasing over time. It's just like a beast. Um, probably we are in a bull market, I'm not sure, but I will just follow my heart to purchase a stocks that I love. Before we get started, I have to say all these opinions are just my personal ideas, so you have to take your own consideration, your thinking carefully before you make any decision. Moreover, since my work recently is a little bit heavy, so I may not have that much of time to film more videos. I know some of you, especially my friends, uh, you're always urging me to make more videos to watch. Um, I know it, I know your feeling, but I just don't have so much free time. So I uh, hope you can bear with me. All right, let's get started. The first stock I will buy. Okay, so this is the only stock I haven't purchased yet in recent months, and that is China Mobile. Take the simple CHL. The reason I didn't purchase recently is, first, I really don't have so much cash on hand. And second is, I do have a not small portion for this stock in my portfolio. Therefore, I would just wait for just a little bit. Um, my average price is around thirty-five dollars. So right now it's like uh, thirty-one, thirty-two, etc. So it's fluctuating there. It's not dropped that much, but I would definitely buy more when it drops below thirty dollars per share. Okay. So for those of you who do not know what is China Mobile. China Mobile is the largest telecommunication company in China. Previously, I also made a video when disclosing my um, portfolio. I also mentioned this stock. So there are two other major competitors, but China Mobile is the largest. When we are talking about China Mobile, uh, we have to compare it with another uh, competitor, and that is AT&T. So AT&T, uh, very likely uh, to China Mobile, is another telecommunication giant and. United States. So let's compare these two stocks and see what can we find. So when we talk about these kind of giant companies with very huge cash flow, the first thing we think about is the dividend. So for China Mobile is less than 7%, while for AT&T is slightly over 7%. So the dividend yields is very similar. On the other hand, for the market cap, the China Mobile is around $133 billion, while for AT&T is around 200 billion dollars. So AT&T is like 1.5 China Mobile. However, when we take a look into the income statement, we can find some difference. So for China Mobile here, here all the currency is actually in Chinese yen. Therefore, we have to divide the values by around 6.7. And for AT&T here, the total revenue in 2019 is around 180 billion US dollars. While for China Mobile, after division, can get around 111 billion US dollars. The revenue here, yeah, there is some difference. It's like 60 to 70 percent of difference. However, when you take a look to the diluted net income available to the common stocks, there is a huge difference. If you take a look to the China Mobile, the net income in Chinese yen is around 106 billion Chinese yen. So if you divide by 6 per 7, and that is around 16 billion US dollars in Quiver. If you take a look to the AT&T, yeah, just around 14 billion dollars. So you can actually see here is a very huge difference. The revenue from AT&T is like 70% higher than China Mobile. However, the profit, the net income made by China Mobile is still like 10 to 20% higher than AT&T. And therefore, you can see the profitability for China Mobile is much, much higher than AT&T. On the other hand, China Mobile, the P ratio is around 8, and uh, for AT&T, the P ratio is around 18. All right, next, I would like to talk something a little bit deeper, and that is about the potential in the future. So for AT&T right now in the United States, we know the United States is not in 5G yet. Um, it's still on its way to go. As I mentioned in the last video, I believe there's still like one year for the United States to enter the 5G era. However, in China, more and more people are using 5G services. If we take a look to the mobile business, the China Mobile, in September 2020, the total customers is around 1 billion people. However, we have to take note that 
the total population in China is around 1.4 billion people. So most of the people in China, they will choose to use China Mobile. And if we see the 5G packet customers, it's already over 100,000 people. We know 5G will be definitely the trend in the future and more and more people are shifting to use 5G due to its fast speed and a lot of other convenience. 5G can also boost the average price for the customers to pay the bills. And I believe in the future, China Mobile will definitely have a very significant portion in 5G mobile market. Here I made a cash flow model to calculate China Mobile's market cap. So I put the revenue growth rate at around 3%. Since right now the growth rate is around you know one percent, but I do believe the five G services will boost its growth in the future. Therefore, I put it three percent just for conservative reasons. And the net income margin is around fifteen percent, and the free cash flow over income margin is around two point five. Therefore, we are able to calculate the five years revenue in the future, and also calculate the net income and free cash flow. And in the end, we are able to get a total market cap at around 180 billion US dollars. However, the market cap for Tron Mobile is only 130 billion dollars. Therefore, there is around 40 to 50 percent of increase on market cap for Tron Mobile. Therefore, I would definitely buy more if the price drops below the 30 dollars per share. The second stock I'm buying is Alibaba or take the symbol BABA. -B -A. Previously, I purchased Baba for multiple times, but I just sold them out when I make some profits. If you're watching my videos, you probably know that I just recently made a kind of decision that I just don't want to sell my share in my portfolio anymore. Um, even though, yeah, this um, near-term profit I can make, but I just don't want to sell it and take it as kind of experiment to see what it will go in the next 5 to 10 years. Baba is very hard nowadays. Um, it's because the IPO for Ant Financial, which is the largest unicorn in the world for IPO. And uh, the Baba stock price is also skyrocketing in recent amounts. I just don't find or pick a good time to purchase in because I think the buyers, the investors motion is abnormal, is too optimistic and it's just like um, too much momentum in the stock as far as I can see. And due to some issues, the end financials IPO recently were just paused. It will definitely, in my opinion, still take the IPO in the future, but probably the price is different. And Alibaba also need you know, to compensate the early investors. And therefore, I believe for most of the investors, they just really scared about it since investors just hate uncertainties. But this is definitely one of the uncertainties. Therefore, the market price for Alibaba just dropped recently. Yesterday, I thought, okay, this is definitely a good buy for me. And I set a target price at $285 per share and purchased some shares. It's not a very significant portion in my portfolio yet. Indeed, it's actually the smallest portion in my portfolio. But I will definitely buy more in the future when I think the price um, is more intriguing to me. So if the price is dropped to 250s, I definitely buy more. Um, since this stock is just so much potential for me and I can see you know, it's destiny and also uh, its potential and also what the products can be in the market in the future. So here I will just take a very simple PE model here to calculate the market price. And that is definitely ridiculous. For this quarter, the revenue grow year over year is around 30%. I believe in the future, this trend can definitely, you know, maintain. It's not just because of its cloud service. So cloud service, 60% year over year um, growth rate. While for the core business, I believe there's still a huge potential since the middle class in China is always increasing and I believe more and more people are choosing or buying online. So that is just a trend. And I believe that growth rate can definitely maintain there. Uh, when talking about the cloud computing rate, um, probably I'm not sure whether you understand the cloud computing or not. So cloud computing actually has a lot of different aspects. But for Alibaba, the main purpose is to support those enterprises. Yeah, they have to see business. However, the core business is still to be to support all those enterprises. From this chart, we can actually see the trailing 12 months earnings per share is around nine US dollars. But here, I just take a step back, right? I just make it more conservative. I just make the EPS as $5. $5 is definitely a very conservative step. I mean, um, it's like almost half of the $9 per share for current stage. 
and I still put the growth rate for around 30%. I believe that can definitely be maintained there. So, but take a very simple calculation. We can calculate the earnings per share right now after discount is around $12.63 per share. So we just need a PE of 25. We can actually get the price right now is $315. So I'm planning to make Alibaba one of my largest stocks in my portfolio. If the price can drop to my ideal price target, 50s, and the third buy for me would be like around 2020s. So if at 2020s, I will put a huge buy there um, since the price is so intriguing to me. All right, the last stock is Dropbox or take the simple DBX. Two years ago, actually, when Dropbox first went public, I purchased some stocks and in the middle, I also purchased some stocks and I sell it. However, recently, I just made another video and I think okay, Dropbox is a really potential player here. Um, I know some people may not really like Dropbox because there are a lot of you know issues there, especially for short sellers. However, for me, Dropbox, yeah, Though they have some concerns, but for me, it's a good play here. Alright, the first concern I know for most of people is they are like a online working platform, but not like the Zoom or Slack. Their revenue is not you know growing that fast. It's like just twelve percent for the revenue released yesterday. So it's not as what people are expecting, right? But that is fine. They're not like Zoom or Slack. The drawback scale is already there. It's quite large. It's over 100 million users worldwide. While for Zoom and Slack, yeah, previously there were not you know, many PayPal users. Not. And especially for Dropbox, it's for individuals. It's not, yeah, they have to be business, uh, but that's not a huge part for them. While for Zoom and for Slack, there to be um, business part takes a very significant portion of the revenue. Therefore, this can somehow explain why the drawbacks is not increasing as much as Zoom and Slack for the revenues that much. All right, so what's the most important thing for drawbacks to suffer right now? You know, it's not their growth rate, but the margins. So it's like for your revenue, if you have more and more revenue, right? But if you still can make your um, margin, especially your net income margin positive, then it still can impress the investors. And I believe Dropbox is making a huge progress here. So in the last quarter, actually two quarters early, if you take this quarter uh, in consideration, they are actually making money. Um, the earnings per share is positive. It's not negative anymore. Uh, another thing I really like Dropbox is about their business model. Their business model is you can think like a retained earning or retained revenue uh, business model. For what does this mean is actually people with papers in order to use the service. I really love this business model is because this can bring you a very huge, very healthy free cash flow and you can invest that or uh, to develop your technology, etc. So I really like this business model. And if you take a look to its gross profit margin, that's ridiculous. It's like last quarter, the margin is 79%. So what about another very profitable company, say Facebook? Actually, their gross profit margin is less than 30%. So this is another reason why I really love Dropbox. Third reason, Drew Houston. I really like this person. The first entrepreneur I knew in Silicon Valley is Steve Jobs when I was in high school. And second is Drew Houston. I even know Drew Houston before Elon Musk. So he inspired me a lot in my early age. Uh, early age, I mean three or four years back, not, you know, um, in primary school, I mean, but yeah, so I really admire him. I admire his inspiration and his attitude to the future. So he once said, we actually don't need to care about the stock price in the near term course, as long as we do our business well to make it really welcome by the customers, the price will just take care of itself. I really like this. And I believe this should be the attitude for all the companies, I mean, However, nowadays, if you see actually a lot of companies, they're chasing after the revenue, um, the price, but not you know, the core business. Therefore, if you see this in the long term, uh, I think this would be the optimal way to make your um, business, to make your product better. So in the previous video, I also talked about the target price, like 
around, if you use PE mode, I mean, can easily hit $40 per share if you put a PE as around 20. If we take consideration for the margin as what it said, uh, around 30, 30% in the long term, in the short term, definitely not. Cause in this quarter, it's just around 6.5%. There is a still long way to reach the 30% target. However, if you put that ratio as around 30%, yeah, it can re easily reach it. Uh, $40 per share, but sometimes you have to take consideration, right? That is just for P model, but not for cash flow model. So I use the cash flow model since most of the values margins here are, you know, not very stable. It's always fluctuating. Therefore, um, the price can fluctuate very much. If you put a not very optimum number, it can easily drop to $12 um, dollars per share for valuation. While if you put some optimal a level can easily like 25, 30 bucks. That's also fine. So recently I purchased Dropbox very heavy. I purchased with three times. So the average price is around $18.9. And Dropbox is the stock that with the second highest original value I put in my portfolio. So the first of course is Vilmi and second is Dropbox. There is a saying, the longer the stock price is flattening, so which means it doesn't increase or drop very much in a long time like three to four years and there's higher possibility that the price will increase or skyrocket sometime a very good example here is tesla tesla stock price just is like flat for four to five years but you know recently in this year everybody knows this stock price is skyrocketing and for Dropbox, it's the same thing after its ipo the stock price is you know, just flat for over two years now, but who knows? Probably next year, probably even in this year, the price will just skyrocket. If you're a short seller, I do encourage you to at least to make a more conservative step here um, to analyze again or um, decrease the portion, the short portion uh, in your portfolio. Since I believe Dropbox, it can be shorted like to 12 or 15 bucks. I just don't think that is very possible. However, for its growth, it's tremendous. It, it can easily grow to $40 in my opinion. Therefore, if you see um, the gains, the potential gains and also the potential loss here, and you can see the gain is much overweighs the loss here. Therefore, yeah, just take a consideration here, just in my opinion, for my advice. Or right, here, I would like to also share my portfolio as what you can see. Here, I just don't want to disclose the specific quantities or the price uh, in each particular stock but just the percentage of the portfolio and you can see the profit here is not bad especially recent days again i didn't purchase any super hot stocks my portfolio again is not like 100 or 200 percent but it's just like a normal pace for me uh, i think 20 percent per year is a very good rate for me and i believe in the future these stocks can still grow uh, in my expected rate. I hope this video is helpful to you. Thumbs up if you like it, sub and join it. See you next time. Have a nice weekend.